Okay. Detroit, hello. Hello. How are you doing, Mr. President? I'm doing fine. Um, essentially, what I wanted to call in and ask you, I guess it's a fairly tough question, something that's been plaguing me over the years uh, as I've watched uh, politics. Uh, just wondering, how, how do we get uh, more intelligence into politics instead of uh, having politics be politics? Because the, the uh, <laughs> people I've met of both stripes, Democrat and Republican, have stricken me as liars or just generally incompetent. So, I mean, how do we, how do we as voters put uh, smarter people in office? Thanks. Well, first of all, I don't agree at all with, at all with your premise. Uh, I would guess that if you took the members of Congress or, or the, in the House and Senate, Democrats and Republicans, or if you took the average governor or even you know, state representatives, I was a state senator one time, on the average, I would say they were well above the average as far as education and, and awareness of issues, and I would say even perhaps IQ, or that might be a, a brash thing for me to claim. So I, I don't think you ought to underestimate the, uh, the character and the integrity of, uh, of politicians. One thing you have to remember is that when one of them does go wrong, uh, if one of them is, commits a, a corrupt act and is caught, uh, or one of them commits an indiscretion sexually and is caught, uh, the publicity is overwhelming. Uh, it's global publicity, and, and it tends to put stigma on all of those others uh, in the House or the U.S. Senate or other political office who really don't deserve that stigma. But I've served as a member of the state legislature. I've served as a governor. I've served as a president. I've dealt with all 535 members of the House and Senate when I was there. And in general, I would say that they're admirable men and women, very intelligent, and most of them are eager to serve their constituents. Do you think more, there are more of these incidents happening or is it the result of something that you did not have, which is the 24-hour news cycle? Well, I think the uh, revelations of improprieties mm -hmm. are now much more heavily uh, emphasized in the public mind uh, because of the 24-hour news cycle, for one thing. <clears throat> the other thing that's happened since I was in office in ancient days is that uh, when I was running for campaign, there was no such thing as negative advertising, say, running for president. <clears throat> I ran against uh, Gerald Ford, a wonderful man, uh, and later ran against Ronald Reagan, who was governor at the time. Uh, we never referred to each other as anything except my distinguished opponent. We, we treated each other with great respect. And if I had deigned to uh, make any personal allegation against the character of, of my adversaries, uh, it would have been political suicide for me. Now, habitually, people get elected by tearing apart the character of their opponent, mostly based on fallacious claims or tri contrived claims or exaggerated claims. And so by the time one of them is finally elected, <coughs> with a narrow margin perhaps, his character has been, or her character has been severely damaged in the public minds by all the negative advertisements that have been heaped around his neck by his opponent who just got defeated. <clears throat> so, it, and in that uh, animosity, this a fairly new development in our country uh, carries on to Washington. And you have an almost uh, very difficult time for Democrats and Republicans to cooperate work with each other and to debate the issues openly on the floor of the House and Senate. And they were debated that way uh, when I was president or when Gerald Ford was president or when Ronald Reagan was president. That's changed now. And, when, and one of the main reasons for it is the enormous amount <coughs> of uh, uh, money that, that floods the political system and that uh, permeates the, uh, the, uh, car the campaigns. When I ran against Gerald Ford, to go back again to mm -hmm. his old times, uh, he and I both campaigned for president on, on the $26 million that came from the $1 per person checkoff on the income tax. Well, I think uh, this last campaign cost something like $2 billion. And, and, and both uh, John Kerry and, and, uh, and President Bush uh, rejected the public funds because they didn't want to be bound by any limits. <clears throat> so enormous amounts of money flooded in uh, from special interest groups and others, uh, and, that, and that's been part of the change. 